Hi, this is Long. Welcome to our video series on search patterns for the most common studies in radiology. Please note that this is an introduction to study interpretation. An enormous amount of detail is omitted for brevity. Continue dedicated reading, seeing as many cases as possible, and keep getting feedback from subspecialists during the course of your training. Okay, so today we're going to talk about a basic approach to the MRI knee. Um, this is going to be a very elementary introduction to the anatomy and the sorts of things that you want to look for on this sort of study. The overall organization is similar to other MSK MRI studies in which we're going to understand what's going on with the patient, look at any sort of prior imaging, radiographic, possibly CT or MRI of the same anatomy, and have a sense as to what um, we're either following or uh, what the suspected pathology is. We're going to go through, look at the localizer images, especially at anatomy that may not have been imaged on the other cross-sectional sequences. We'll go through and look at the bones, cortices, marrow space, we'll look at the tendons, ligaments, the menisci, we'll look at the cartilage, and then we'll look at the musculature, soft tissues, other uh, anatomy that we're seeing, in particular the neurovascular uh, structures that course through the similar area. Okay, so let's bring up an example of the MRI knee at our institution. Okay, and here um, is our institutional protocol. We have our localizers. We've got axial PD sat, fat sat. We have uh, sagittal sequences, our fluid sensitive sequences, which are T2 fat sat. We have PD. We have T1 non contrast. And we have kind of correlate uh, coronal sequences, T2 fat sat, and coronal PD. Once we have an understanding as, what, as to what's going on with the patient, I'd like to start by looking at the localizers and making sure any anatomy that's going to be particularly at the edges, we're not missing any sort of um, unexpected uh, finding uh, kind of in, at that region. Then as we go through, uh, first thing is to look at the um, bone marrow and the cortices, especially if there is concern for um, any sort of prior trauma. We're looking for cortical breaks or fractures um, and using the various um, kind of particularly the uh, PD and T1s to look for, you know, say, cortical breaks for irregularity for osteophytes and then ultimately then once we have a, a look at kind of the periphery of the bone looking at the marrow signal to look for marrow replacement as we you know generally will see with kind of um, infiltrative neoplastic or it could be infectious processes also in, in trauma we're going to see difference in marrow signal and correlating also with marrow edema um, one of the things we want to make sure that we're also looking at is kind of around um, you know, the cortices, if we're seeing osteophytes, if we're seeing abnormal bone uh, formation, fracture fragments, heterotopic ossification, okay? And then once we've taken a look at all the kind of osteostructures and internally at the marrow space, um, we'll go through and assess the tendons. And it can be useful to correlate across a couple um, different sequences here. So for example, uh, on, the, on our uh, axials, looking at the medial side, we'll see the uh, pes anterinus muscles. And from anterior to posterior, we have the sartorius, the gracilis, um, and the t uh, semitendinosus. Laterally, we're going to see, um, you know, the ileal tibial band, we'll see the biceps femoris tendon, um, and then further down we'll see the popliteus uh, tendon coming around. Um, and then we'll see also a bunch of uh, kind of ligaments on that side as well. Uh, use, you know, we can kind of correlate that, um, kind of seeing similarly medial and lateral, um, both on PD and then for fluids, uh, on our fluid sensitive sequences to look for abnormal signal, uh, the coronals that can be particularly advantageous in that, for that. Um, looking at the uh, anterior and posterior, you know, anteriorly we've got the quadriceps uh, tendon, patellar tendon, looking for abnormal signal there and correlating also with the axles can be particularly helpful here. And then as we go posteriorly, we'll, we'll see kind of the um, other uh, other hamstrings, the uh, gas, the soleus, gastroc, plantaris posteriorly as we kind of see the upper aspect of the lower leg um, kind of at, uh, you know, posterior, posteriorly here. All right. And then... Uh, that kind of covers our, you know, the various tendons we want to go through. And again, looking for continuity, normal position size, and then making sure that we're seeing, you know, normal signal across the sequences. We'll move on to the ligamentous structures. In assessing the ligaments, we can kind of, we can start here with our sagittals and look at the ACL, um, where we can, we're, we, we can, we are allowed a little bit of um, intrinsic fluid signal or striated appearance, okay? And it can be best seen, well, here, um, 
on the sagittals and then kind of can use the coronals to kind of get another view of it. Um, and then now looking at our PCL, which should be completely black. Um, and then if we want to look at the medial and lateral uh, ligaments, using our coronals, we can take a look at like the MCL um, with superficial and deep fibers with the deep ones kind of attached to the meniscus here. And then at the lateral aspect, um, there's a kind of a, a large, comp, you know, a whole bunch of uh, structures associated with the uh, posterior lateral, um, you know, that what can be associated in posterior lateral corner injuries um, and these sorts of structures, including the arcuate ligament, LCL, um, we'll see here, uh, and then various other smaller ones, um, such as the fibular ligament, patellofibular ligament, and posterior lateral capsules. Not all of these will be well seen, and, and the number of, in particular, um, structures that we're, we're going to see are going to be associated with this are going to be different um, based on what you read. Um, but we can kind of use the uh, coronals in particular and then correlating um, with the axials to get a sense of these these structures. Okay, and next we'll look at the menis menisci. Um, the proton density are particularly useful correlating with the fluid sensitive images, um, both coronals and sagittals. Um, and then if we have any sort of questions, uh, in some cases the axials can also be, can be useful. Um, it can be use. It can be helpful to kind of start, you know, anteriorly, um, and look where the menisci attach at the intermeniscal ligament um, and then kind of going through and then following following around um, uh, look, looking at the anterior horn body posterior horn and then kind of where it meets meets the root of the meniscus and then kind of looking um, both medial and laterally and we're looking for kind of like uh, you know looking for the thickness looking for the uh, kind of relative po position and looking for some kind of you know particular signs like the double uh, PCL sign um, if, if there's concern if we're thinking um, like a displaced flipped or extruded meniscus and then we're looking also to see if there's any sort of abnormal signal um, and if, if, if the abnormal signal extends to the articular source surface if we can kind of correlate on more than one sequence okay these are the questions you want to be asking when we're looking at the uh, menisci and then we're going to look at the cartilage um, at the knee both using the proton density and fluid sensitive sequences. When looking at, say, the patella, um, we can kind of use uh, to advantage the axials, um, both at the, you know, uh, patella and the trochlea, okay? And then use, using both the axials and the sagittals um, to kind of localize and characterize any abnormalities we're seeing. Um, in the medial and lateral compartments, it can be particularly useful to use a combination of the coronals and sagittals. In when we when we are looking for abnormality, we correlate and can be kind of tipped off for findings in the cartilage by seeing subchondral marrow cystic change and edema, which can correlate with any abnormalities of the cartilage. Okay, and then once we've taken a look at the cartilage, we want to make sure that we kind of. Uh, don't forget to look at the subcutaneous tissues and musculature. T1 pre-contrast images as well as PD can be helpful um, uh, in taking a look at the overall size and anatomy of the musculature and subcutaneous tissues. Seeing Using these fluid sensitive sequences can give you a sense of any edema or inflammation. Um, these in correlation can also help you find any sort of incidental mass lesions. Um, we're thinking about overall bulk on our PD and T1 for atrophy um, and muscle, you know, uh, looking for atrophy. Um, uh, fluid sensitive sequences are going to be able to give you a sense of any edema, inflammation. Posteriorly, we're going to have to remember that there's a neurovascular bundle that courses along with the popliteal artery, and we're going to kind of make sure that there's not any sort of like aneurysm, entrapment, inclusion, or mass lesion that has any sort of impact on these neurovascular structures posteriorly. You know, as we wrap up and try and put everything together, it's important to just double check a particular, you know, the marrow signal um, and then kind of things to, that are easy to miss, such as in, you know, easy to forget, looking at the musculature, subcutaneous tissues. It's important to remember that a lot of the more concerning processes, infection, infiltrator process, neoplastic, and even trauma, you're going to see as marrow signal abnormality. Okay. And just as a quick recap as to what we talked about in terms of a very basic approach to the MRI knee, we're looking for an overall understanding of the patient. Um, what the potential uh, underlying pathology may be based on clinical suspicion, what, if anything, we're following, 
we're looking at the localizers, we're looking at anatomy kind of brought, you know, at the edges, particularly making sure that we're not missing anything that can be seen only on the localizers, going through, taking a look at the marrow signal, the cortex, the tendons, ligaments, um, and eventually the misci, the cartilage, going through making sure we're looking at the musculature, subcutaneous tissues, neurovascular structures, and putting these all together and just making sure that we don't miss any of the particularly concerning potential underlying etiologies.